am I fine? Should I, should we start? Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Listen, yeah. um, okay. Well, I won't go straight away to the screen share. I'm just going to have a chat to people for a few minutes. Um, first of all, thank you so much for joining. I know that things right now on a global scale are really confronting and tough, especially for teachers. I, my heart goes out to you, I really, and students, of course. Um, I know that you've had to develop new skills and new sensibilities and at the same time cope with your own lives. So wherever you are on the planet right now, um, respect for you for being here, especially given the subject that we're going to be talking about. So first of all, I thank you and welcome. Um, yes, as Paul said, I'm at the bottom of the world right now. Usually I'm based in Europe, but I happen to be in the last place before Antarctica almost. And it's kind of late and it's autumn, so it's a little bit upside down. Um, I want to acknowledge the British Council. Many different people in different departments have been so supportive of the No Project and the confronting material that we develop. Um, it's it's, uh, it will become increasingly apparent throughout the next set this session why this is incredibly relevant to today. Um, and uh, some people ask me, well, what's this got to do with education? And my answer is everything. Uh, we are language teachers for the most part, but we don't teach language in, oh, hi from Wellington, <laughs> Tim, I'm in Nelson. Um, uh, we don't teach language for no purpose. We teach it to express ourselves, to express empathy, to express um, leadership change uh, the, for the better, for betterment of humanity. And I guess my, my take on language teaching, whether it be from little tiny ones in junior courses who are pre-A level, you know, everything must be about um, collaboration, tolerance, expression, confidence for change. We've only got a certain number of breaths on this planet. My God, don't we know that these days? And the point is, what are we going to do with it? And as, as educators, we are in a challenging position, but we're also in a pretty privileged position. And when I say educators, I'm talking about and by the way, I just want to clarify, I hope that there is nobody present in your room that can hear you who is under 16 years old. Because although I'm going to be talking for the most part about pedagogy, I am also going to be talking about the crime of human trafficking and modern slavery. This material that was awarded was a, a global finalist for the Elton's Award um, is predominantly appropriate for upper secondary young adult and adult learners. So let's make that clear. I also want to say that if you right now are feeling a bit fragile and you're not sure if you're up for this at this very minute, please look after your own well-being first. Look, this is going to be recorded. You can watch it later. I hope, <laughs> share it with other friends, share it with colleagues. But this, this stuff is not pretty. And while I despise sensationalism and um, cliched imagery and inappropriate um, storytelling, at the same time, I will address things as they are, um, but with dignity and respect. So are we good? Are you ready? Look, because I've, I'm focusing on the material, um, I tend not to be able to look at the chat box at the same time. So, Paul, you're going to handle all that for me, aren't you? Yes, yes. And pretty much, thank you, love, pretty much every single image that you see is on the No Project site. It's either in the category, which is called slavery, which looks at different forms of enslavement today, or you can just go to the No Project site and download this free teaching material. Every single aspect of a four hour lesson plan or two hour lesson plan, according to how you want to use it, is there, ready made and ready to go. Having said that, I hope you stay and we can look at things together. All right, I'm gonna screen share. 
where is my, oh, I can't find my PowerPoint. Where's when I go to the desktop? Where, where's my PowerPoint gone? Come back to me. Sorry. Here we go. Just talk me through this one, Paul, so I'm all set. Uh, okay, you're there, yeah. Okay. Fine. Are we good? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Okay. Me. Yeah. So please, folks, use what is on the site. We have spent years, I've been around anti-trafficking actions or anti-slavery actions for over 20 years now. And um, my focus is education. For a couple of minutes, I want to tell you what the No Project does and what we don't do, maybe. Um, this is us. People, when, when you say, when I say that I'm involved in um, anti-trafficking or anti-slavery education, people often tend to think that I'm either involved in legislation or policy or running a shelter. No, I do have friends around the world who are doing those various vital aspects of the movement, but my focus is what I'm familiar with, and that's teaching and working with teachers, having, and at the same time, integrating arts, film, dance, music, journalism, spoken word poetry, um, and uh, different forms of the arts in the broader sense of the word, so that youth can communicate to youth. And they don't always rely on us as older, middle-aged talking heads to provide the knowledge or the motivation. So. Let's, so, yeah, I guess my principle of education is very much, you know, in, um, encourage others to be the communicators and the agents of change. Our values at the No Project, by the way, the No Project team is really tiny. <laughs> We're about three or four people, but we are supported by thousands and thousands of students, educators, academics, researchers, filmmakers, people around the world who might contribute half an hour, they might contribute for four years. But it's about people becoming involved as much as they can at a given time. Without a doubt, educators are the people I need the most. So our values, inclusivity, sustainability, dignity and respect. Respect is particularly important when it comes to the writing of the material. I am very much against sensationalist, um, inappropriate narrative telling, and we'll, we'll look more about that. Oh, speaking of teachers, here's some people from various, and youth, of course, different people from around the world. Who do I see here? Um, Druvas from India, New Zealand, Libya, Spain, Greece, Italy, UK, oh, many, many different youth ambassadors. And here we have two young fellows who came to me after being involved with an ed the educational seminar and said, teach me how to do this seminar. Alejandro on one side is presenting, you can't see in front of him, he's presenting to 500 students in China. And Alex on the other side, he created his, he took over his entire school, created a team when every single person who you've seen, oh, bar one, oh no, nearly every single person was an ESL student. Oh, hello. And here's a few of my cohort, academics, professors, and writers. One way which we reach youth is through our multimedia seminar. And if you'd like to find out more about that, go online, write to me, see what we might be able to do online. But um, back in the day when we could have social, you know, social distancing and ma non-masking was feasible, the only country in the world where we don't need to do it right now is New Zealand and a little bit Australia. Um, these are seminars which we have done in many, many different countries, private schools, public schools. Every single person there is a second language speaker of English. Yeah, as Paul mentioned, we are partners with probably one of the leading academic hubs on the planet against slavery and it's the Rights Lab. And it's an incredible honor to be participating and collaborating on the teaching material with them. So people go, oh, slavery, come on. We're all slaves. We're a slave to the system. I'm a slave to my job. No, that's not what slavery is about. I'm talking about literal slavery 
And even though I'm not going to provide a legal definition right now, because that will vary from country to country, there are three criteria which underlie slavery. They always have, and they still do today. One is violence, whether it be psychological or physical, psychological violence in particular, fear, which leads to control. Fear of someone whom you love being harmed unless you obey the slaveholder. What's it all about? Same as it ever was, profit. And I guess uh, underneath these three horrific um, criteria is the concept of ownership, that you can actually have the right to own another human being, that you are entitled to do that, which of course is unacceptable. According to the Global Slavery Index of 2018, and for obvious reasons, this data is incredibly difficult to get right now. In 2020, there would have been another one, but well, pandemic. According to the most recent updated Global Slavery Index, there are over 40 million people enslaved. Look at the gender distribution. Now you might be surprised about that 15 million in forced marriage. Forced marriage is not arranged marriage. Forced marriage is not necessarily children, but it often is. And um, sadly with the situation of the pandemic, it is soaring. You may be interested to know in 46 states in the United States, child marriage is still legal with parental consent. So do not make assumptions about where this forced marriages are taking place. I just want to deal with a particular um, key issue, which you may have thought of or may not. And if you've done any of the seminars with me before, perhaps you already know this. So forgive me if it's repetitive, but this is an important issue. Human smuggling is a different crime to human trafficking. You think, reflect upon your own language. You may, you may or may not know what the two legal terms are, but just this is a very kind of quick definition human smuggling requires the illegal crossing of a state or international border for example people might smuggle plants across they might smuggle um pharmaceuticals cigarettes not so much these days um they might smuggle obviously drugs alcohol but they might also smuggle people for reasons which we were not going to go into, but I can quite understand. I make no judgment on why people might choose to be smuggled. But it requires the international, it requires the crossing, the illegal crossing of an international border or a state border. Human trafficking is kind of strange because the minute we hear traffic, we think movement. No, human trafficking can occur in your own street. For example, I know of a case of a 12 year old girl who was exploited for commercial sexual exploitation by her uncle for four years in her own bed, in her own street, in her own country. She was sold to the men in the community for four years. She did not cross an international border. So one very quick way of trying to get a, your head around the difference between these two crimes, human smuggling is a crime of transportation, human trafficking is a crime based on exploitation. There are different forms of exploitation that slaveholders and human traffickers are driven by. The teaching material to date, which we will look at, and please, please download it, use it. We've had thousands of educators around the world um, using this material. I mean, I, don't, I kind of have a sense of where and when, but I, I hope the impact is effective. Um, the area that we will not look at is children associated with armed forces and armed groups. We do not have teaching material on that at present. 
the rest we certainly learn. Okay, very quickly, I just want to introduce you to a few books that are absolutely vital and wonderful. And if you are a reader, um, come back to this or go to the site. I think most of these are on the site. Girls Like Us is brilliant, written by a survivor herself. And Rachel Lloyd was trafficked um, from the UK to a European country. And she, uh, I won't say any more about it. Take a look at this. Blood and Earth is extremely uh, relevant because it looks at the intersection between environmental destruction and slavery. Environmental destruction, climate crisis leads to displacement of people because they are no longer sustainable in their own environments. They move and they are vulnerable. This key word vulnerability will come back to. Jasbinder's book, Shame, again is a autobiography looking at the circumstances of forced marriage in the UK. Just Mercy, I'm sure you might have heard of the film. Brian Stevenson is a brilliant lawyer and he is also the founder of some, um, the Alabama Memorial Museum, which honors slavery in the most dignified and um, moving way. A Walk Across the Sun is a novel. If you love to read, get this book. You will understand how, how global human trafficking is. And in fact, sadly, how effective traffickers can recruit young people. And this statement, I was in a webinar not so long ago like, um, during COVID, and this statement was made by Siddharth Karar, a leading global expert in the field of slavery. The first responders in a crisis are human traffickers. A tsunami, an earthquake, a pandemic, a cyclone. Oh, where's your mummy and daddy? Oh, you don't know where they are? Oh, don't worry, we'll help you. So some years ago, after learning more and more about the crime, initially I thought it was just about commercial sexual exploitation and girls from other countries being trafficked across borders. How wrong that definition is and how inaccurate my understanding was, you know, 20 years ago. So through a lot of research, a lot of narratives and a lot of firsthand information, I said unacceptable. So besides the seminars, I created, or the No Project, as a team with writers and editors and filmmakers and youth donating art and artists who I know in different countries contributing their skills. We created this free downloadable teaching material, which as I say, is generally suitable for 16 years and above, but that can be adapted. You know your students better than anybody. Here are some of the images. And as we go through, um, I encourage you to consider yeah, how you yourself might use images with students in the class. By the way, the material is all online and is all digital. So you can either use it in a classroom situation or I happen to know that it is being used for online teaching um, in different countries around the world obvious reasons we cannot teach face-to-face -face easily. Okay, language matters, imagery matters, representation matters. Um, having, there are certain terms and certain images we refuse to use and will not accept. For example, child prostitution. There's no such thing as child prostitution. A two-year-old cannot give consent. Child pornography. Please note that even Interpol doesn't use this. And they have a very interesting discourse analysis of why not. It is called child abuse material. Imagery, we will not accept imagery that enfeebles victims of beaten and bruised faces, of duct tape, of 
of chains, of barcodes. Um, okay, I sometimes if an, a young artist has spent hours and hours working on something, then there will be times when I will say, okay, you know, just to honor their effort and their understanding of the crime, we'll include that. So it's not quite as categorical as it sounds, but what we do when we work with artists or musicians or poets or whatever, we actually have a, a document called Guideline for Artwork because we don't want people to waste their time and effort and skills creating um, images which are cliched, cliched and sensationalist. Represent, representation matters in the sense that we're currently working on a surreal film based on a spoken word poem. And at no time do I want to show an enfeebled, beaten up victim. My goal is one of hope, of change, of power, of leadership. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's some of the material. If you can see me, I don't know if you're watching on a mobile phone, because I'm going to be pretty small if you are. Here, I downloaded one of the, um, this, is, this is what I encourage you to do if you're teaching at an institute or someone, download, get the institute to print all the material and put it into booklets. And there you have it. It's all there. I must have taken these photographs some time ago. And yes, I am so grateful to the British Council for I mean, not only nominating us, thank you judges as a finalist, but to, to provide this global platform so that more and more teachers get to know about this. Um, we, yes, as Paul said earlier, we were received the judges commendation with other people. We were amongst esteemed finalists of equality, diversity and inclusion, which I'm honored by. Okay, the teaching material. Every lesson is based on a true narrative. And be careful how you start. Don't, don't, don't come at this material, yes, but today I have to practice the present perfect continuous. How am I gonna do that about slavery? It's like, well, maybe, maybe those two things don't quite go together. First comes the, the, the individual's experience. And from the individual's experience and understanding of this horrific dehumanizing crime, comes the lexus, the vocabulary, and then unfolds the grammar. But the grammar and the vocabulary are not the structural guiding points for this content. This is students learning about something which is vital, it's relevant, but first comes the human experience, the narrative of the human. Uh, just, just to prove to you <laughs> I, that I, I am actually a course book writer. Hey, you want me to write a structural syllabus? I can do that too, no problem. Um, but the, you might say, well, what about the vocabulary? The vocabulary is very rich and it is. But to be honest, after a certain while, there's only a sort of quite a, a, a defined parameter of different vocabulary that is required in order to discuss this, which brings me to the level. You might say, what level? I would say B1 um, in terms of Europe, common European framework, B1, yeah, B1 plus. So people say, yeah, but I don't really know much about human trafficking. How am I gonna teach it? Don't worry. The step-by-step, -step, let me go back for a second. The step-by-step -step teacher's guide not only is a, oh, I should, I missed out the apostrophe there. Sorry. <laughs> the, um, the teacher's guide. Uh, the, the guide not only helps you with pedagogical sort of flow of the lesson, but if there's a point, it's like, oh, I don't exactly know what that means. We've included it. It's like, note, here's something to put in. There is listening material, it's original, plus the script, of course, the key vocabulary. And now something which we developed after writing the lesson plan is, um, this was based on our piloting it with students in real classes, of course. Um, the students would go home and start to Google things or go to YouTube and, ooh, some of the things they were looking at were not appropriate. So what we decided to do was to include about two hours of material that supported the, the classroom material that students could use 
when they were going home and wanting to watch more. So we've selected short videos, maybe a song, maybe a, an authentic interview. Um, and so there is about four hours at least of two hours in class, two hours out of class uh, that is available with each of the lessons. And we're, you know, I'm developing more lessons and more lessons as we're going, but at least it's about 36 hours on the site right now. One thing which is key, and we're gonna look at this in a minute, is that we have also provided, with ex based on examples of what students have done around the world, ideas for actions beyond the class. I also want to point out that even though I've sort of mentioned high school students, this material has been used, for example, a dear friend in Columbia piloted material in her business English environment with the CEOs of multinationals. Another friend in Europe, he coaches law professors, sociology lecturers at the university who wanted to brush up on their English. And he too used this material because it is about injustice, global injustice. Okay. So coming back to what I started to say a minute ago, people might say, well, how do I start these lessons? You know, don't, don't, don't start, right, today we're going to talk about slavery. What do you know about slavery? It's like, whoa, 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 gently. I'll tell you why, because you never know what is, how can we? We don't know what's going on behind closed doors at home. Even in adult learners, this might trigger or spark an emotional response that we didn't quite expect. Same with teachers. We've all been through stuff. We've all seen things. Um, so this requires an emotional intelligence besides a pedagogical intelligence and an, and an understanding of e good ESL material. The truth behind closed doors. My suggestion to you is look at the slides in each lesson. This is how usually when I'm piloting material or watching other teachers use the material, they tend to start with a visual image, a statement. What This is in order to engage the students in the intellectual and emotional curiosity. What's going on here? What's it about? This particular lesson happens to be focused on domestic servitude, domestic workers behind closed doors. You could just use a statement, a statement to get people talking about things. Where's this going on? What's happening? By the way, the, the listening material that goes with this is pretty, pretty confronting and based on true stories. use artwork. Every lesson has either a visual slide or two, uh, the title of the lesson itself is, is designed to be thought provoking. But at the same time, the artwork which is being created by people of different ages and skills is um, also designed to be part of the lesson and to engage and activate interest. Moving on from domestic servitude, another lesson looks at enslavement of young boys in particular on the cocoa plantations in West Africa. I'm not gonna go into much more detail right now. Please look at the lesson plan. A dear friend of mine is involved in the shelter where the young boys and sometimes girls go after having managed to escape these plantations. Again, thought-provoking art. And what we're going to see in the next couple of lesson plans is the focus on us as consumers. The more I, the more I learn about this global crime, the world shows up differently. I can walk down a supermarket aisle and I just see it dripping in blood. But hey, we have our chocolate cookies and we have our cheap seafood with no country of origin. And we have the sugar and the coffee and the, oh, the fruit and the marmalade and the tomatoes and who picked those? 
And then maybe I go and stay in a hotel when I'm, you know, doing seminars in other cities. I don't know who picked the cotton that went into the weaving of the textile of the sheets that I'm sleeping on. And more and more, we have to ask, where did this come from? Is this, you know, am I sleeping on cotton sheets that basically have got somebody's life in them? I mean, should those sheets be covered in blood to use a really visceral image? And it's not necessarily, be careful that organic and bio doesn't necessarily mean ethically sourced, or usually I would like to think it does. But thousands and thousands of smaller companies around the world are making the effort to go back to the source to find out who did pick that cotton, who did weave that, who did make those clothes. And I, I cannot tell you how much detail there is in the lesson plans, especially the follow-up lesson plans, the interviews with Siddharth Karar or um, Kailish Satari, a no Nobel laureate. Check out the information. It's serious. It's not just pretty pictures done in an arty way to, to provoke things. It's a lot more detail going on in the lessons than that. Yeah, brilliant documentary, short documentary by Mickey Romano. Oh, whoopsie, sorry. Yeah, this was some art that was spent, sent spontaneously to the No Project. And that's a paraphrasing of a statement of one of the young men who was rescued. Let's move on. But again, it's about the source, this slavery and the backstory of a daily product. In this case, carpet weaving. I was working with some artists in New Zealand last year when we did this photo as a sort of thought provoking aspect of the earlier stages of a lesson. And the artist actually said, why would you buy an item of pain and sadness for your home? I mean, who wants that to be, who wants to be wearing that in their home? Not me, but I, I don't always know where things come from. And in some way, I'm a little bit fed up with the consumer having to always ask that questions. Companies, multimedia, multinational companies should be accountable. But unless there is political legislation at all levels, there's no punishment. That lesson is called Carpet of Dreams. Again, a true narrative of a little boy called Ravi. Read the narrative. Yeah, before you use any of this material, make sure you read everything in detail. Find out about Goodweave, they're brilliant. Looking at the backstory again is gold. Siddharth Karar, who I mentioned earlier, I quoted him, what the, you know, the first responders in a disaster are the traffickers, the slaveholders, traffickers. He won, he was, there's a brilliant article, he documented going to a mineral mine recently. And he said, the, the ringtone on our smartphone should be the cries of the children in the mines. You might think gold is just about jewelry. Uh -uh. Every single smart device we have, and including my phone sitting right here next to me, is probably dripping with blood, not necessarily in terms of the assembly of the components, but in terms of the minerals themselves. Where did they come from? This is an image from a short film by Boston University film school students. It's a wedding. And these beautiful items start bleeding, but who can see reality? The young girl. Youth see reality. Eyes Wide Shut is not about ethical sourcing of products. It's about the recruitment, the grooming and the recruitment of a 10 year old girl in the UK. Sarah, true narrative. This lesson is particularly important. People say, well, what's it got to do with education? The grooming that is going on online and face to face, especially on right, online right now, is soaring. Please, even if you choose not to use this material, go to the lesson plan, download the content on grooming. Again, it's written for B1 students um, or if you're around youth. 
My name is Sarah and from the age of 10 to 12, I was groomed by a group of men in the UK. Grooming is the initial stages before actual exploitation. Nobody did anything for seven years. Please listen to the audio file for this one. That's why it's called Eyes Wide Shut. I don't commission art, I don't ask for art. People just send me art. And this is a pretty confronting piece to use as a basis for a lesson plan. Oh. These are two sentences to be very careful of. If, if you ever hear a youth saying, hey, it's your choice. I mean, if and this is when I'm working with youth, I was working with a hundred students last week in town in New Zealand, and we talked about recruitment sentences. Hey, it's your choice. What a, what a manipulative statement to make to a teenager. It's your choice. I mean, a teenager wants to feel like they're in control of their destiny but it's your choice as part of the manipulative process. Oh, let's not tell your parents, you don't want to upset them, do you? Okay, moving on, something doesn't feel right. Oh, it was wonderful working with students in Athens, Greece. Thank you, Maria. Um, working on this lesson plan. Do you know over a hundred thousand flight attendants, they will come back to work one day in the United States have been trained to identify indicators of human trafficking either on the ground or on the airplane. I know of cases of people who were actually recruited during the flight. This is a true story. And, and, and you might say, well, I don't know these indicators. I don't know, you know, do I might guess. And this is a really important point. What happens is that the learning space becomes a shared space with you and your students where you learn together. You walk through the understanding of different aspects of this crime hand in hand with the students. Of course, you are the person who is the guide, shall we say. But as we say in the step-by-step -step lesson plan, you are also learning. So the space is a, uh, it's not just, oh, you know, the classroom, uh-uh, no. It's a, it's, a, it's a space of change, of, of self-expression, of, of safety, of protection. I mean, the, the students are actually learning smart travel, smart being on the planet this way. This lesson plan is based on several documented cases and a few harrowing short videos about forced marriage. This artwork by Paula from Spain, an artist in Spain, was given to us. So thank you, Paula. And I mean, I'm going really fast here, you know, obviously we talk about this with the students, we go more slowly, talk about it. Who's talking, why, what's going on? Okay, in groups and pairs, breakout rooms, try to figure out what the situation is, what kind of art, what was the artist trying to portray? You know, I mean, there's so much depth here, which I'm sort of skipping through in about 15 seconds, so please forgive me. And one more lesson, which is based around a very common form of trafficking, and I'm sure every single one of you, just looking at your, the countries you're based in, and that is children used for forced illegal activity. If you do anything today, go and watch the most beautiful, clever video, which is part of the lesson called The Letter. Dear Mama, I miss you, your son, Miku. And I, did, I piloted this lesson with several times with a lovely school in Athens and the students, you know, prediction, who's talking, and the students came up with wonderful things. Oh, somebody's in prison, um, he's abroad, he's a student living abroad. Somebody said they're talking to a grave and they've written a letter to somebody who's passed away. But in fact, that's the little boy. I mean, this, that's an actor playing the boy, but this, the narrative is true. The students were so angry, angry after this lesson. They, they gave themselves homework. 
<laughs> and these are the two 14 year old girls I only have one example here. She wrote to a trafficker. I'm writing to let you know my thoughts about you. It's very, it's a very polite beginning, but brilliant English. And um, I think, I don't think anybody fixed it up. I think she wrote it as herself. So bravo her. Another lesson focuses on, this is more about action projects. It's, we're teaching, um, not only do they learn about the crime, but they also learn about project management, collaboration, how to go about creating a project beyond the classroom. Oh, and here is some art. As you can see, students take the outcome how they want to after having done the seminars, after having done the lessons, they say, oh, we, what can we do? We have to tell other people about this. So dance, music, Matteo down the bottom, he is much older now and sings uh, besides studying economics at university in the UK, he also sings. And this was a special song he wrote. Um, I also want to tell you, do you remember the, a little bit further back there was a lesson called Behind Closed Doors, The Truth Behind Closed Doors, that focused on domestic servitude. The narrative there is about a woman called Rosa. Now that narrative is a true story. With informed consent, um, the narrative Rosa told us her story, it was translated, it you know, was done in an academic research, with academic research consent. But the story, came to me in the following way. I had been based in a European capital doing many seminars in a very large high school. This was a few years ago. And then a couple of years after I was there, I got an email from a student saying, Miss Judy, um, I attended one of your seminars. And I was thinking that was only 40 minutes that day that I was there. And I attended one of your seminars and I really think more people should know about this because I think I've identified a case of human trafficking. I met this lady in my church and da, 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 da. And then the, the young student started writing all the indicators that she remembered from a seminar from two years beforehand. And sure enough, it was classic recruitment, deception, horrific violation of human rights, horrific treatment of a domestic worker. And Rosa's story has gone global. And so the outcome, I can never predict. I mean, the No Project in some ways is extremely organic in the sense that I didn't say, oh, I'm going to teach students about this today and then they're going to send me two years later a story about domestic servitude. As teachers, we know, we, do, we cannot know the outcome of our energies, especially here. I mean, I'm not going to give an exam on slavery. I can't give a grade on slavery, but just from the constant emails and, and um, people over the years and, and different things, I know that things are happening. Measurable outcome, very difficult. One form of measurable outcome is that after every seminar, I ask the students to write down their honest and heart, anonymously, their heartfelt thoughts at that very minute. And I literally have, thousands and thousands of these it's like a doctor or a doctoral advisor I mean a student would have a great discourse analysis session with these but I just picked up one before coming on the webinar today and this was a, a probably a 17 year old last week in New Zealand I'm feeling disgusted to be living without this knowledge until this day it's crazy to think that modern society slavery is still happening permission wrote permission, meaning I can use it. And that's, you know, a lot of students are pretty angry. Why is this not now? Why is this not in our school books? How come we're just learning about this now? And that's a really good question. People say, what's it got to do with education? Everything, protection, safety, empathy, knowledge of global crime, profit, economics, 
the sourcing of products that we eat. How dare we not think about where something came from? And one of the final images is, is part of a short film that we're just working on. And I, I'm hoping the British Council will take over the, take the film and develop teaching material. Maybe I should from it. This short film was based on a spoken word poem, which is absolutely incredible called Nothing Personal. And the final, I can't tell you because of copyright, but the final line of the poem is, oh, it's nothing personal. It's just business. And there you have it. It's just the business of squeezing what we can from a human being, a baby, a newborn, an old man, a young woman, a young boy, squeezing what we can for profit. Hi, Paul, do you want to take over? Hi, yes. Um, the first thing I should do is apologize for the background noise, which you will hear probably because my neighbor has decided um, that there's a webinar going on, so there you go. She's going to invite someone around to do, drill some holes in her uh, walls to put something up. So apologies about that if you um, if you can't if you can hear that and not hear me. There you go. <laughs> it's quite loud. Uh, it feels like it's actually happening in my house in this room, and it's not. Um, so I'm going to try and uh, sort of speak briefly and, and ask you to speak more, Julie, Judy, um, with, with questions and stuff. Um, okay, there's a, there's a gap. Oops. They've stopped. Sorry, sorry. There we go. Talk really okay. fast, Paul. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm going to go and throw something at my neighbour's builders in a moment, actually. Um, thank you, Julie, for that. It's, uh, it's, yeah, well... I mean, certainly very, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, I don't want to say heavy, because it, but it is, but, but poignant, but ne necessary, I think probably is the word I would use actually. There you go. Um, and, and thank you for everyone who's, who's been watching and comments. Um, I just want to get on to questions. Uh, <laughs> sorry about this. Um, okay, I'm going to ask a question. This is from Morag. Uh, who said she's enjoyed your presentation. Um, she's a business English teacher at a university in Germany and supervises student projects. She'd like to do a project on this topic next semester. Uh, do I have to contact your organisation to ask permission or would you like to have information about what we intend to do or have done? Yes, yes and yes. And no, you don't have to contact me, but please do. And one of the lessons, the gold one, uh, can you, I'm okay, my volume's okay. The one which is called um, Gold Costs More Than Money has an, an authentic interview with one of the world's leading jewellery designers who uses ethically sourced gold. Now, this is really interesting because, yes, the engagement ring might cost a little more, but when the customers discover that the, the product which is being purchased, which engagement ring being a, a symbol of love, eternally, one would hope, is actually ethically sourced, it, um, it enhances the value of the product. So, and this also, and then um, the other one, anybody teaching business, not, not just business, but us as consumers, look at, the, look at the story about the handmade rugs. Handmade rugs are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And so are textiles and furnishings and curtains and sofas. But what's behind them? Look at Goodweave. Goodweave is, I trust with, oh, you know, my heart um and good weave is a frat is a is a label if you flip it over and it's not just high end like my son was a student living in the states right and so he and i went down to a store which is not which is called target okay target is not fancy fancy high end all right even they had good weave carpets there available for it's the kind of where students go to buy stuff yeah so Yes, get in touch with me. I would love to hear from anybody. Um, and basically, you know, the organization, <laughs> it's only three of us, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> We're pretty small. 
I was going to say it's quite yeah. I mean, there's, considering there's only three of you, there's, there's you've done a huge amount of, of work. Um, so I was going to ask what's what's coming up next. That's probably uh, to, to I don't know. That might be a bit a bit of a challenge. Um, I will I no, will ask. Uh, yeah, spoken cool. word poem. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, the spoken word poem. The um yeah the spoken word poem. You know, hey, it's it's nothing personal. It's just business. And this phrase, this phrase, the nothing personal, oh, mm. and the poet has got it. Boy, did she get it on the money. She just, whew, I, yeah. and I, yeah. Anyway, any more questions? And, and look, please keep in touch. Write to me, people. Download the list, download the lessons. And if you find any spelling mistakes, tell me. <laughs> Yeah. One one thing I was gonna one thing I was gonna follow up on actually about asking you um, what's coming up and obviously yeah you said the, the spoken word poem is being made into a film um, there's a question or a suggestion I guess uh, from Solomon uh, in Ethiopia who um, well first of all said thank you for the brilliant presentation but also asking have you thought about translations um, or simple presentations for young learners. Um, so I guess it's taking the lesson plans and translating them into local languages or working with people yeah. to do that. If somebody wants to do that, get in touch with young learners. Be careful. I mean, the, the cocoa one is a good start. Everyone loves cocoa, chocolate, chocolate ice cream, chocolate cookies. So you can go very, very gently because, as you all know, young children have a, have empathy. Mm. They are very em empathetic. What's the word? You know that word, you know um, that thing. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, uh, but you got to be pretty gentle. You got to be really careful with it. You got to go gently. Mm -hmm. um, you got to go gently with. You got to go gently with adults too. By the way, mm. I was going to mm. say actually. I mean, with with sort of young learners, because because often a lot of I mean, you know, a lot of what you're talking about the lesson plans, you know, directly relate to young learners so I guess it's you know yeah. how can you how can we sort of raise awareness of this so that so that you know so that young learners you know children if you like um are perhaps more cautious or more you know a, a bit more streetwise or savvy about about these things absolutely and um look at the lesson plan our uh, eyes wide shut I mean, read it to yourself first, please, folks. And for anybody who's interested, take a look at Rachel Lloyd's book, Girls Like Us. But Eyes Wide Shut, that narrative, well, you know, I mean, it was a very confronting, challenging task, researching and writing this material. Not because, well, it just, yeah, for about two years, it, as I said, did my head. And just when you think you've heard it all and then you hear more. But yeah. thanks to wonderful writers mm -hmm. and artists and co-authors and editors, and you all know who you are. <laughs> yeah. I guess I mean a lot of it is sort of crowdsourced. I mean that the, the support that you get is is you know is is volunteered by people who obviously you know yeah. feel strongly yeah. about. Yeah, and yeah. on the volunteer note, by the way, folks, none of this is paid. I wish. So if you'd like to donate, you know, go to PayPal and give us five dollars. Buy me, <laughs> it helps. But we, we, uh, you know, I'm just oh, God, fundraising. Ugh. You know, people say to me, "Oh, but they should pay you to do this." It's like, who is they? You know, is there another they that I don't know about? <laughs> who? <laughs> yeah, the No Project is completely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's voluntary kind of. Okay, um, a couple, a yeah. couple of people I've been asking Judy how they would get in touch with you or how they would get in touch with with the uh, No Project. Um, yeah, sure. Judy, Judy at the No Project dot org. That's right. You'll find me. Yeah. Judy at the No Project dot org. Apologies again for the background noise. I shall be having a word of my name <laughs> after this finishes. Um, okay, I'm just looking to see if there's any more questions there aren't. So I think we will stop there. Um, it's just really for me to say thank you again, Judy, for, for coming along. I know it's, what, what time is it there now in New Zealand? It's your evening. Uh, 10, past, 10, 10 past, oh, 10. Your 10, past, 10 past yeah. 10 yeah 10 past 10 okay so. yeah uh 
also I was just I'm just to people who uh, might still be with us I'm, I'm sort of skimming through some of the comments and I oh thank you so much you've written lovely things but um if there's a comment which I haven't picked up on and you want to question you know it's like what about this what about that or I see somebody's written me a narrative Evine I don't know where I'm in the country. Okay, please, please, please write to me. Um, and also, if you, oh, I want one of those t shirts. Yes, write to me. I can send it to you somehow. Um, get in touch. <laughs> I, should have, I should have had my t shirt on, shouldn't I? I've got one. I know that you gave, oh, yeah. you gave it to me the last yeah, time we saw each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, and I had Tefl. Yeah. And when that was still face to face. <laughs> well um yeah. okay just just to uh a couple of things because people are asking i've just put some things in the chat some links i've been putting links in throughout um the webinar there's a couple of links to content on learn on the british council's learn english website mm. uh, a youtube link um to the no project and obviously links to the no project as well and the lesson plans um so hopefully people have been getting those we will uh, update the page on teaching English. Um, the recording will be available there from later today, probably, and we will also add in uh, links through to, um, to your content. You will get an email tomorrow, um, not you, Judy, uh, people, people attending. Um, me, you can get an email too, I'll send you one too, um, saying thank you for attending. Uh, and there'll be links to the certificate, to the feedback survey if you haven't completed that. Um, and also where you can find the, the recording. Um, when this ends, you, a window should open, <laughs> not a real window, but a, on your computer screen window, um, with a link to the survey. So please do fill that in. It's always great to get your feedback. Um, and I think obviously for presenters as well, generally, um, they like to see the feedback uh, that you give. Um, I'm guessing from the comments that it's all gonna be positive so thank you uh and that's pretty much it judy just to say again thank you ever so much um for giving uh, your, your evening look no 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 thank you you know you know paul that you have participated you've been part of this for years now and i can't thank you enough oh, the right. british council no the the integrity and courage that it takes for an organization to embrace this crime um head on shall we say it, it it's really really important okay. and you. you know yeah. thank you no i agree I mean, it is a, it, this I mean, there are lots of obviously you know, this this is a particularly important um kind of area that we you know try to to kind of work in and you know uh, yeah i mean i think the good thing obviously with these sorts of things is you know, we're not we're not publishers we're not a publisher so in terms of what you can and can't do and the, and the restrictions that publishers obviously put on, on on content is doesn't apply um with us so and, and with you so that's that's um so it's great that we can kind of yeah you know. and sadly with the pandemic people are so vulnerable and yeah. making and mm -hmm. desperate so making bad choices Mm -hmm. yeah there's that on the one hand and on the other hand is all the screen time and traffickers are loving it with their mm, fake, sure. fake identity fake identity yeah 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 no i know um yeah. okay all right. all right we'll leave it there thank you judy thank you everyone and um apologies for the late start and uh yes we will see you i think we have a webinar Next week, um, that's going to be with Anna Garcia Stone, and she's going to be looking at communities of practice, online communities of practice. So join us for that, and hopefully, there won't be any noise in the background. Oh, right. We'll end it there. Thank All you, right. Judy. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Good night, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.